Hey everybody, this is Michael from Dead Stick Adventures and today we're going to check out a 1963 Cherokee 235. So you've seen a Cherokee 235 on the show before, you might be asking why do we have this one? So that's what the buyer wanted to do, that was his mission. He said, I need something fast, something powerful, something easy to fly because I'm fairly early in hours and I want to be able to go from Kangaroo Island to Adelaide fairly quickly. So we found a beautiful Cherokee 235 for him. So this Cherokee we found has been lovingly looked after by a guy up in Bundaberg and it is gorgeous. It's got a composite cowl, it's had brand new paint, it's got a brand new propeller, the engine's tidy so it's got the standard IO 540 up front, 235 horsepower in a standard Cherokee airframe so it is an absolute power pack parafield today normally fly out of Murray Bridge you see a lot of propellers that are fairly heavily damaged I have never ever ever felt a propeller like this that's got hours on it it is perfect so up front here it's got the 0540 so she's a little bit thirsty but she's a rocket ship plenty of power on the side here, standard Hershey bar wings. What's really cool about these though is they've got main tanks and they've got tip tanks, which means that this aircraft can hold 314 litres of fuel, which is plenty to get to Kangaroo Island and back again. Oh, I feel that paint. Oh, new paint on aeroplanes makes me happy. Being an early Cherokee, she's missing the rear window, which is actually fine in this one. It's, it's really nice in the cabin. We'll have a look inside there in a second. Standard baggage door. And then back here, let's have a look at this paint. It is beautiful. Here in Australia, we have this little guy called Mr. Sheen, and it's used on every single aircraft. It's just a multi-surface polish. I'm really curious, what do you guys use in the States to polish your aircraft? So being an early Cherokee, it's got these raised bumps, both here on the vertical stab, but on the rudder, they're indented. And in the research I was doing for this video, I could not figure out why Piper went from the raised up indents here or out dents I guess they're called to the indents which are on the later Cherokees if you know leave a comment below I'd love to know why you think they went from the bumps to the dents I know I keep banging on about the paint but seriously this aircraft has a really special paint job it's got metallic blue stripe solid straight through the inside there and then it's got this gold stripe on the outside which I think really really sets it off it's one of the best paint jobs I've seen on an airplane yet there's the bumps again and the metallic paint. Something else I love about this aeroplane is these big wide spats. Check them out. They're good for about another five knots of cruise speed. That's everything on the outside. Let's go have a look on the inside. There's those, look, raised bumps here, indented bumps here. What is Piper doing to us? Later model, later model ailerons, early model flaps? I don't know. I'd love to know. There's no, there's no, there's no step. Oh, look at that. So these early Cherokees are really interesting in that they've got a totally different panel layout to the later Cherokees. So let's have a quick look at it. You've got your airspeed indicator, your AH, and your altimeter up here. What's really nice about this one is the panel's been modernized with this G5. So it makes it a lot safer. You're not relying on a vacuum pump that's fully electric. Then of course, you've got your, some of your circuit breakers are here, so you can see them immediately. What's kind of unusual and not very ergonomic is these switches down here, for example, your fuel pump, you can bump that really easily. So it's not in the best spot at all. And then you've got your master switch and an actual starter button, which is kind of cool. I started this aircraft the other day and it started on the second compression, which is really nice. It's got a beautiful engine in it. Uh, also, you'd be used to the throttle quadrant in the Pipers, whereas this one's got these vernier push-pull type levers. So it's an interesting, interesting design choice there by Piper initially. And then of course, what I love about the verniers is you've got on the mixture, you've got this really fine adjustment, which we're missing on the later model Cherokees. I really enjoy that. And then in the center here, of course, we've got our radio stack. So standard sort of GPS in here, just a GNC 300. Uh, we've got a radio, it's got a bit of a crazed screen here, so we'll fix that up. Nice transponder, really good radio stack there, and it's got a UHF as well, which is gonna be pretty handy for the buyer who's on Kangaroo Island on a station out there. We've got this really nice, even though it's small, this little engine monitor, which is fantastic, gives us the readouts for all six of the cylinders. RPMs over here instead of being down here, another interesting design choice. And then 
Everything engine related is really on this right hand side here. You've got fuel gauges for each of the tanks, which is really cool. So you can see what's going on with each of your tanks. Although we never really trust these, we just dip them. And then oil pressure, oil temp, fuel pressure, and alternator or generator in this case, what's the generator up to? So interesting panel layout. What's really nice is it's been refreshed with these metal panels. So instead of old broken plastic, you've got this beautiful metal panel in here and nicely painted, of course, like the rest of the airplane. And then brand new glare shield up the top here. So this is a really nice touch, actually, a leather glare shield. Um, obviously keeps the glare off the instruments, but also that, that white stitching sets it off, and makes it look really nice. So down the bottom here, of course, we've got the fuel selector. What's nice is you can individually select each tank. So left tip, left main, right main, right tip. So you can sequentially, uh, you can sequentially drain from your tanks. And then of course you can keep it balanced by using the tips and then using the mains as well. Just gives you really nice control over the fuel trim. So down here, it's standard Piper flap lever all the way up and then all the way down here. Notice it's missing the trim wheel. Hmm, where is the trim wheel? Let's look up. There's the trim wheel, check that out. So overhead trim wheel. So you wind it this way for nose up, you wind it this way for nose down. I haven't flown this yet, but it's gonna be really interesting to get used to using the trim up here. It's pretty comfy in here actually. These seats have been re-trimmed or at least re-foamed and they are really, really comfy. I reckon if you were doing a long trip, it would be really nice. Now, the other thing that's really nice as well is these curtains. When you've got the sun beaming in on you here in hot, dusty, dry Australia, it's pretty nice to be able to pull some curtains across and just get that sun off the back of your neck. Of course, you've still got to keep your lookout, so you keep it to about there. Keep an eye out for airplanes. Interesting design feature here as well. Normally, these are on the floor, but this is your fresh air vent. So again, I'll be interested to see how that goes in flight. Oh, this is interesting. It smells like my childhood in here. Avgas and old vinyl. Nice. Ah, yeah, right. Yep, that was user error. So what is it you guys want to know about this aeroplane? There's heaps of stuff I could tell you about, but it'd be just rehashing some of the stuff we've talked about in the other Cherokee videos. Is there anything you really want to see on this aeroplane? Let us know in the comments and we'll see if we can fly it. What do you think? That's our 1963 Cherokee 235. What do you reckon? Did you like the video? Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let us know what you want to see more of on the Dead Stick channel. And of course, hit the subscribe and the bell so you get notified when we put up a new video. I know I talked about the paint a lot. There's one thing I don't like about the paint on this aircraft. Check out this nose bowl. Doesn't it look like it's got double chins or triple chins with this brown stripe around here? I'm not so sure about that.